G'day guys, welcome back to another vid. Um, this one we're busting a couple of hours away from Base Camp Queensland to a place called 1770. Yeah. And we've actually managed to snag a really good site. <laughs> so we've been waiting for this for a while to one to, for one to come up. Yeah. But Beck has got a knowledge knowledge nugget, knowledge cool. nugget, a knowledge nugget about the town. Uh, what is it, mate? Okay, so we're heading to 1770, and it's the only town in the world that has numbers like that the name of it is numbers am i Joking. making sense yeah. yeah yeah so the 177 yeah so one is actually the name, the name of, of the, the town so how cool is that <laughs> it's a hard one to get into like the beachfront sites they're really quite sought after so we're glad we snagged one giddy up If you didn't know, 1770 is like a um, super relaxed campground. So there's, oh, which is what we sort of like, you know. There's no crazy facilities. There's no playground. There's no swimming pool. But the best thing about it is you don't need it. You're parked up right on the beachfront, or most of them. There's a fair few beachfront sites, uh, and also you can have a fire. How good's that? There's not too many places you can have a campfire anymore in a, in a campground. So uh, we haven't been here for years. I'll try and find some old photos of um, when we were first here when the kids were super young. But I tell you what, I um, I'm getting excited. Ah, oh, geez, I missed this, mate. Hey, and just like that, mate, we're set up at 1770 Campground. The van is over in the background. We've run straight out the tinny over to a sandbar. Do a bit of sandbar hopping for the Arvo while the wind's up. You can sort of duck in behind some of these sand dunes here. Tide's racing in. It's supposed to be a good week for crabbing because it's leading up to a new moon and we got high tides in the morning and night. So we'll swim the kids for a while and then I'll duck out later and duck right up the back of the creek and try and put some crab pots in some hidden spots and see if we can't get a couple of bucks and cook up a feed while we're here. But this is good, mate. I love it. This is the bar here. So if you go about 60 k straight out from here, you hit Lady Musgrave Island which hopefully in the near future we can show you on a good day. Uh, and then you've got hour and a half to Bundy, hour and a half to Gladstone, you're smack bang in the middle. This is 1770, mate, and Agnes Water's only five minutes down the road. So, mate, I love it. I'm sorted. I've got my beach bag, my chair. I'm just going to pop my bum here. <laughs> ah, life doesn't get much better. Ginny hasn't been out for a while. Feeling it, feeling the love. The whole goal for this trip is to get a muddy, and a flathead. We've got five days. Do you reckon I can do it? <laughs> you come for a swim, Beck? Yeah. Ah. You know one thing about Beck is she hardly ever gets in the bloody water. It's so annoying. <laughs> I'm just trying to go to get in. Come on, prove it. Oh, he's on, he's on. <laughs> I'm trying to get there really fast. I'm coming! <laughs> wanted one crab and one flatty and look at that about me tenth cast mate look out he's got lots of spikes he's legal too hold the rod <laughs> oh stoked look at that yeah these things if you haven't tried them they're like a what are they called a berkeley bender they're a little shallow water lure there's literally like 30 centimeters of water out there you just piff them as far as you can jig them on the way back in and these things smack them off the surface it's so cool look at that Nice. You. Dinner. <laughs> All right. We're going to upsize him. Dinner, sir. I want one at least 60 now. I told you I was feeling it. I was feeling the vibes. Yeah. And he felt it. I carried it to the boat. <laughs> He's feeling yeah, the vibes we'll and he felt it. I want to go put him in the boat. 40. 40. You ripper. So what does it have to be to take? If you're ever unsure how big something has to be, just jump on and Google it. Like what size the dusky flathead have to be. And it'll tell you. Is it different in every state though? It is, yeah. So you always say, yeah, he does. what size do dusky flathead be in Queensland? Minimum size 40. So oh, she's bang on. Yeah. That was lucky. All right, you go, so need to catch bigger ones, darling. Woo! All right, me and Rooster are going for a swim. I told you Beck won't come in. She's still standing up there. She's wet. She's not wet at all. 
Here she comes. Come no, on, I just want to say, yeah, other women will relate. Like, I just washed my hair last night, so I want to get a couple of days out of it. So I'm just going to do a body swim. Just get in, mate. I am. Hey, Charlie Bear, have you found any Nemo's? <laughs> no, but I found the bass who fish in the shallows. Oh. Rate this splash out of ten. <laughs> I'll give you a one and a half. What? That's a two and a half. All right, swim done. Flathead done. I'm going to sort the crab pots, put them up the creek while Beck cooks a curry. Hey, what sort of curry are you having? <laughs> it's got chicken in it. It's about all we know. All right, let's get a crab. I'm going to show you. Um, well, first I'm going to kick off with a disclaimer that I'm really not a crabber. Hey, I've probably only thrown a dozen crab pots in my life, <laughs> and I've got a few in Arnhem Land on the hook. Oh, he does sound really yeah. good. He's cranky, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm knackered. Dead set, that was like 15 minutes hard going. I knew he was big. I could feel him fighting the stick, but... Oh, 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 oh mate. <laughs> oh, that's killer. Aaron wouldn't let me give up. I'm like, mate, it's got to be your go. I'm done. And he's like, nah, you'll get him. You'll get him. Have a look at that. He's a stonker. That is that's a big crab. Yeah. Giddy up. Cheers, Az. But um, I've just got some fish frames. I've got a couple of pots. And we're going to go as far up the creek as we can and try and get them into spots where no one else goes. I figure if we're not lazy and we do a bit of effort to get up the back, then we might be able to pull a couple. All right? We'll see how we go. I know this creek gets pretty heavily crabbed as well. But anyway, so pots. Let's have a look at these. Like, check your re local regulations. You've got to have identification markers and floats on your crab pots. Uh, in Queensland, you're only allowed four per person, I think it is. Pretty sure that's why I've only got four. But make sure you check for every um, different state you're in uh, what you're allowed to use, because I know you can't even use these crab pots in other states. It's weird, you have to use the dillies or witches hats and all that sort of thing. But anyway, uh, what I did, I got them all online, so I bought four pots. They're about 15 bucks each, not much. There I, um, I'll rip this off a uh, Jarvis Walker one, so it's the net factory, all right? So you get those and then also you grab a, like a, a crab pot kit and you get a box. Oh, there you go, crabbing accessory kit. So inside you get your four floats, uh, you get four bits of rope, you get four bait hooks and you get four of these, which is a name tag or an ID tag. So you make sure you write your name on there. So in Queensland, you've got to put your name, first name, last name, and address. Uh, I like putting my phone number on there as well, just in case you, you lose one, someone can send you a text message or something and say, hey. But um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop them in tonight. High tide's at 5.30, and again in the morning at 5.30. So I'll put them out for a tide overnight, and I'll come and check them in the morning. There you go. So I'll rig these up and start chucking them as far up as you can. You gotta get right up in this tight stuff, I reckon. Where all the bigger boats can't go. Have a look how tight this is. Probably wipe the GoPro out on a mangrove. Yeah. This is where we wanna be crabbing. Right out the back here. See how tight that was? It goes even further up there, but I don't think I'll get much further. But that's the good thing about the tinning, so hopefully this set little creek doesn't get crabbed as much as the main creek, because people can't get their big boats up here, right? Give the ball a rub for good luck.
Oh, well, we might as well troll our way home too, see if we can't get a flatty. Check it. out Bex doing a hot tips now this one I would have showed you about a year ago now but it is hands down one of the best little contraptions gadgets that we have in our van so I'm going to show you I've installed it into our new van and it's these all smalls mini hangers so as you can see it's got all the hooks there but I put our bath towels on there don't they hang beautifully Justin has them honestly everywhere he's got them like in the car the boat he's even put them in the shed and shoved like fishing lures and stuff in there anyway we hang them up under the awning as well they're super handy for like your bathers and togs and things now that is my one tip for this episode but what I'm gonna do now is just show you a go-to meal that I make for the kids probably once a week and if you're a hope hopeless cook like me you will absolutely froth on this. So it's literally five ingredients. So I've just got some pasta cooking there. It's a can of corn kernels. Uh, I've got tuna bake sauce and obviously the can of tuna. So what I'm gonna do is um, cook all that up, basically slap it together and I'm gonna pop it in the Weber because we don't have an oven. And then I just sprinkle cheese on there. I actually feel quite silly telling you this meal because it is so simple, but the kids absolutely love it and they will devour that tonight. So I'll show you putting that together. Now, many of you are asking me if I still like the white. Yes, I'm loving, loving, loving the white. It does show up a few more like grubby prints and things, but I don't know, it's just super easy to wipe. I'm just, I don't know. It's a matte white if you're interested, but it's like just super easy to clean. I'm really happy with it and awesome storage. Like I've got honestly the best kitchen storage ever. Anyway, I'll get back to um, getting this meal together and I'll show you the end product. I'm gonna mix it up. Cheese. I don't have a flipping grater. That is so annoying. Okay, plan B. Do not bag me out for cutting cheese, okay? So it's raining outside, so we haven't used our Weber, so we put, just popped it in the grill here. Ooh. And do you know what? I love a bit of grilled cheese. We've done this before, actually, with the tuna bake, and it turns out real good. So I'm just going to dish it up now. The kids are hungry, so let's get them fed. Mm. What of a dick. <laughs> All right, high tide is at seven in the morning. So me and the kids, or it's just Billy and Charlie this morning. Say good day, Bear. I want to be in. <laughs> you want to be in. Ah, uh, the kids are going to pull two pots each. If we can find them, that is. Do you reckon Dad will be able to find them? Yeah. Do? Hopefully. <laughs> well, can't have a look. I remembered where the creek was, but um, I only remembered to mark three pots on my GPS. So uh, here's hoping we can see the floats. Do you reckon we're going to have any crabs in there? Hopefully. Oh yeah, come on. We had a really big storm last night and a heap of rain, so hopefully it might have flushed a few out. Apparently they come good after a big rain. I don't know, like I said, I'm no crabber, but we got pots in, we've got to be doing something half right. Here you go, here's me, me pots marked in here with little waypoints. So, here's hoping we can find them. Hey, we found the first one, can you see the float? Yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon if I push in there with the boat, you'll be able to grab it? Yeah. I can grab it. <laughs> How do you even get it in? I see the... Yeah, I see it. Wait. There we go. How do you even get it Ow. in there? Ow. Pull it in. Look out, you're going to get wiped out. This is where the... Ah, shoot. This is, my face. This is where the uh, midges will start to get you. It's a big fat ball. Here we go. Oh, we need one further, I can't reach. Hang on. Bill, can you hold that? Yep. Alright, hang on, let's pour it in. Go in. 
Hold this in. Jump in. Sorry. Grab it. Grab it. Sit. Nothing. 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 And there's a lot of fish in there. Look at that, kiddos. Oh, empty. What? Empty. Can I reckon we leave it in here, but that looks like a pretty good spot. Yeah, it's got bitten out of, so. Hey? It's got bitten out of. Kind right. of. Yeah, maybe. sort of. Let's throw it back in. No crabs. That's disappointing. That is disappointing. Well, I thought there'd be heaps of crabs in here. Well, you just never know, do you? That's why it's called fishing, not catching. Really? <laughs> it is for me, mate. I think we really snuck in these mangroves, didn't we? Whoa! There we go, bring him in. There's the crabs. Oh, yeah, there is a crab oh, in there. Yes. Look at that, Bill. First one. Yes, he's not big enough, but he's a crab. Let's have a look at him. That's a male too. Damn it. There you go. Oh. Well, we didn't, um, didn't manage to get a keeper this morning. But we did manage to get lost. Lucky I've got a GPS. Uh, Charlie wants to show you something. What have you found on the mangrove seeds, Bear? Doodles! <laughs> Give us a look. I do. Uh, they reckon mangrove seeds have got doodles. No, they don't. All right, let's go and find a big doodle. Doodle! Ah, <laughs> oh, it's my favourite time of the day. Don't worry about that. Hey, um, a little bit of info for you is that the bloody 1770 campground does not have a dump point. So this one is at like the showgrounds or the SES grounds about two k's away, something like that. Anyway, good times. Oppa. Do you reckon you'll ever do this, Beck? No. Is that a straight up no? I'm so good at it. You're so good at it? It's pretty difficult. You know you use this as well. It's not like you walk to the public toilets. Hey. Got sanitizer in the door of my fridge here. Have a good swash swash. And away you go. As you can tell, it's actually not my favorite job in the world. <laughs> but it's all part of it. Alright. Seriously, mate, next time you are doing this. Yeah. I told you. No, you're you just talented. get to sit there and scroll socials while I bloody get covered <laughs> in poop. It's catching up, okay, answering people's questions. Oh, well, next time I'm going to answer questions. Maybe so good at it. Rado, rado. Morning mission. Solo mission. I love me solo missions. Uh, there's a lot of water in this flat up here. It's all draining out. This is where I caught that flatter yesterday. I'm feeling it. I'm going to throw this again, the lucky bender, and see if I can't smack a big one. I want a big one. I want like a 700, 800 flatty. So keen. I haven't caught a big stonker for a while. You know what I just realised though is that. Um, my landing net buggered. The little push pin that locks it out for the handle, it's broken. So now if I catch fish, I'm gonna have to use my hand and scoop it like this. <laughs> ah, it's all corroded, eh? So anyway, got the Alecky down, gonna run the spot lock and just work these flats. Yes, we finally got one. Oh, it feels like a good fish too. I just changed my lure up to a white one and uh, he took it. They're right up on the shallows, eh? Like literally a centimetre of water. Here we go. He's only just gone. Oh, he's so close. Anyway, 38, something like that. How about next time? Come on, son. Might be a bit heavier 
He's not ready to come in. Super hard, I'm only fishing. Um, six pound braid, eight, eight pound leader. Yes. Oh, that's a good lizard, that one. Ah, oh, she doesn't need the measuring mat. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Have a look at that. Yes. Ah, uh, yep. Be better. Coming right up. They're getting bigger. There you go. She is 48 and a half. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Number four for the day. Oh, I don't know if she'll go. Oh, he's got a bit of stink in him. Oh, a bit of fight. Hey, have a look at that one. She might go 40, that one, I think. Hope so. It'd be a good feed. Is that one doing the damage again, the white bender? Ew. Hey, I think that's like number seven for the day. Killing it. There you go. Funny little fella. Might be the last fish of the day, I think. I should say it, eh? One last cast. <laughs> what a good morning sesh, eh? I got, I reckon I caught about seven or eight flatties. Shark took one of me bloody bent minnows. Uh, and I've got two fish to take home. Caught a lot of undersized stuff, but it's good. At least I know where they are. I'll come back and hit them again every day. Um, anyway, go home and have some brekkie, see what the squeeze is up to. Might take her for a bit of a run and have a sunbake and a swim somewhere. Yeah, what a day, hey? Uh, we are lucky enough that my parents are visiting in the same area. So we've left the kids with them and look at this. It's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Tinny day for me in the squeeze, mate. It's low tide, uh, beautiful clear water. There's no wind today. It's bloody fantastic. I'm gonna put the drone up and show you around. And then me and wife are just gonna chill here and have a bit of a swim. You gonna get in today? That's a no. <laughs> she's continuing her run of no swimming. No, now I think, <laughs> I think she's doing it now just because I mentioned something. 1770, mate, you go all right. today mate we have got a sick little giveaway here for, from amps brothers this is actually my new bike we are giving away a chubby we've had this rip type for about a year it's lived on the front of the van justin will pop in the specs these are wicked and they're a lot of fun i absolutely love this thing all right so the competition is to give away one of these chubbies you can win the exact bike Oh, I even got my matching coloured t-shirt on, how's that? <laughs> if you're a 79 series owner with a sandy top, I reckon you're gonna want one of these. But this one here is the Riptide. This is the one we've had on the front of the van for like over 12 months. In the dust, in the rain, in the weather, which is why we ended up getting another one, because you know how well this one's gone over time, sitting on the van. Um, when you buy them, right, they show up in a box at your front door, and literally they take about 15 minutes to put together. Most of it's assembled already. You just have to put on a wheel, a hangers, a seat, and they come with a heap of different accessories you can choose from with like bike racks and um, little baskets on the front and throttles and all these different things mate so you can pick and choose when you're there but i tell you what for van life and for home life and for scooting around the beach and stuff they've been absolutely brilliant and if you do want to go and buy one just in time for christmas we have a code for you which is trip in a van and it'll actually save you 150 bucks off these things so the link will be in the video description and also you can use this qr code You ready, Bill? Uh-huh. All right, this is third time lucky. So Bearsy's here as well. Say hello, Bearsy. <laughs> if we don't get anything in the pots this morning, I am moving them. I've let them soak for a couple of big tides, changed the baits, and only got nothing but little stuff. All right? If there's no crabs after last night's big tide and a few nights of rain, I'm going to push them further up the back of the creek. What do you think? Are going to get crabs today? Hopefully. Hopefully. Me too. I just want one. 
So can you do the lucky crab pot dance before we pull it up? Come on. How's it go? How's the crab pot dance go? <laughs> I like it. Hmm. Hey, what have we got there? Long crab. That's a buck. Oh, I reckon she'll go legal. Look at that busy. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Wait, first pot. You beauty. At least one. At least I'm lucky. Yeah, look at that. Window. How good's that? We'll put the crab yeah. measure on him and see how big he is. I always carry one of these in the boat so you don't get in trouble. Uh, it's got blue swimmers on one side, or sand crabs and blue swimmers, and the other side is mud crabs. Now it's got to be 15 centimetres across, they reckon, for a mud crab. I think ours is bigger than that. So let's have a go. I don't know, he might... <laughs> you know what? I've got a feeling he might like just be undersized. Look at that, he's just legal. Oh, it's... <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Muddy number one. Hey, I'm actually going to put this crab back, although he's just legal. It's like he's maybe just changed his shell or something. He's a bit soft and a bit, um, I don't know. Anyway, I don't think he's going to be much good to eat. So we'll go and put him back somewhere. No point doing him any harm. We might as well let him grow into a big buck for someone else one day. Good plan? Yeah. Yeah? Hey, here he comes. Whee! See you, mate. Give us a look at yours, Bill. How many in there? Three. Three? Tiniest thing in the world. Oh, I got one little and one. Two and then two. Look, they look like Jenny's, eh? No. That's Jenny, yeah. That's a top. No, it's not. Oh. And that's, uh, that's yeah. a Jenny. They're both females in there. Oh. That's alright. Let's shake them out. We'll move that pot. Last pot for the day. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, there's one in there. Ah, and a little brim. But, it's gonna be too small again, and I think it's a Jenny, yep. Ah, that's a crabbing mission fail, mate. Four days soaking pots, and we didn't get a keeper. Oh well, next time. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think it's like a little Mackie or something, or a little, Schoolie, there you go. Hey, go, son. I've seen the birds working out here. And here they, here he is. Oh, he's not going to be ready. A little school macky. Look at that. Oh, up you come. Up you come. I've only got like really light line on for chasing flatties, so he's probably going to knock me lure off the end. See if I can get me half busted net together. Try and catch him. Whee, come on son. Come on. In the net, in the net. Ready up. Hey! <laughs> ah, nice one. Little Mackie dog. Hey, just started trolling a barrel lure around the back here through the birds. I don't know if he's still on there or not, actually. They're not very big. Yeah, there he is. Another little Mackie. Look at him. Tiny little fella. Ah. You're not big enough, mate. You're not big enough. Go away. Look at the teeth on him. Oof. I don't want them to land on your bloody feet, that's for sure. There you go, son. mate fish hi i'm gonna um give you a bit of a poll or a questionnaire on a, a scale of one to ten how much do you reckon a one being no and ten being yeah loves it um how much do you reckon beck loves me filleting fish in the caribbean <laughs> that's why i do it when she's not here i honestly don't do it when your wife's in the van like they just get it i understand it does smell a bit fishy but it doesn't bother me so I'll just be, um, I always do it when she's not here. She comes back and goes, do you clean fish in here? I'm like, nah, nah, I'll just put some scraps in the bin. It's a hot tip for you. Hey, while I'm going, I have got a new um, knife, new filleting knife. 
Actually, I've got a whole new set of blades. Look at this, I've got that on super view so you can see them. Check that. Hey? I told you I've been hinting at it for a while that um, I'm gonna show you this knife setup, and I will, all right? I'll do it this episode, so hang on. I've got three, three flatties, three flatties. Two at 40, one at 52, I think it was. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, good um, good eating size fish. I'll fillet these up. I just love beer battered flathead tails, mate. That is the go-to for me. Get your knife and just go under this fin and behind this fin and just cut up towards the head, like so. Try and get all the meat you can. And then you just flick your blade back along the spine. Go through a couple of bones. You might have to wriggle your knife through a few bones at the start. Once you get to there, just hold him up straight, slide it down the backbone, and look at that. You do not miss any meat. Brilliant little fillet, and then you just gotta slice a few bones out and skin it up. To skin them, I just like to lay them out like this. Start at one end, just gently dig your fingernail in and then start your blade. And then, just like to slice along like this while you pull on the skin. Voila. Sometimes because of the shape of the fillet you don't really get that bottom section. I haven't really figured out how to do that yet so then I just go along with a sharp knife and trim that last bit of skin off. I have seen a method where you can actually just grab the tail and like pull the skin and it all comes off but I don't know. Sometimes you just stick with what you know even if it does take a little bit longer. I still get the job done. There you go. It's a skinless flatty fillet. And then there's only, there's a little few bones for this rib cage bit. So you, what you want to do is just slice them out. This is what I do. I find them here. I run my knife down the back of them. Like so. And then you run your knife down the front of them. And you should just be left with this stand up rib cage of bones like this. Find the last one, nick him out. That's all the bones with bugger all meat on it. And there you have a skinned and boned flathead tail. Look at that. Whew. And then when I beer batter it, I literally just cut it into a few sections. I go one there, one there, and another one there. Make them all sort of the same size so they cook nice and quick. Bang. Yummo. Here we go, get the flower of the beer, Nancy. Whoa, what? 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 That they're right here, but they're going into a wrap. Oh! And they're like so good. I've they had look. A few sneaky have you now? You're killing me. Have it's look at this. So nice. Oh! Can you hurry up and feed me? Because <laughs> I want to get back outside. Feed <laughs> me. How is it, Bear? It's good. No, I like that. Gnarly means good. There's one side van views. Look at that. The sun's going out. Oh, it's on one side. And then look at this. We've got the delicious Beck right here. Hello. And then this. Oh! And a fire. I Epic. cannot wait to eat this, mate. I know. See. Mm. I'm starving. I'm starving her. And this is the best bit. Can I take two? Okay. Right, Righto, guys, welcome back to another shed session. Say hello, wifey. Hi. Hey, she's going to join me in every shed session from now on. Am right? I? Okay. I highly doubt that. But anyway, <laughs> hey, uh, we copped a couple of days of bad weather in 1770, so yeah. we packed up and bailed, and we are back here in the shed to give you a quick rundown on something that I really love. I hinted on it earlier in the episode, so you should know. Uh, but we'll have to go back to 1770, mate, because what didn't I get? Fish. A crab. Oh, a crab, yeah. I didn't get a keeper. And we, we didn't have the greatest weather. We had a couple of banging days, but I'll tell you what, it's on the list to go back and explore some more. So you'll see that in a future rep, but 
Beck's going to take hold of this. She'll run in the reins, mate. And I'm going to show you one of my favourite things. And I reckon it's, one, it's probably one of the best presents you could give uh, a camping or caravan husband or wife, in my opinion, because it's one of my favourite things I've got on the road. Come on, over here. I showed you quickly in the uh, the knives, right? And I've been holding off on showing you the full bundle because they never had the petty knife and the filleting knife, and I knew it was coming out, but it's here. And look at this, this is what it comes in, this beautiful leather roll. Um, I keep saying it, but mate, if I had this under the Christmas tree, if I didn't already have one, if I under the Christmas tree, I would be pumped, mate. So it's a good idea for this. Uh, in here, inside, let's have a look. It's not only a knife roll, like it's fully leather, right? But it's also got this part here that you can fold out and hang up. Put a couple of nails in the shed. And um, Beck won't let me actually put hooks in the caravan, otherwise this would be hanging out full time. <laughs> Doing that. It would. It would be so cool just to whip them out. That would be ridiculous. It would. It? But there you go. From <laughs> Let's go this way. Uh, you've got filleting knife, petty knife, chef's knife, cleaver, and chopper. All right. Now I'll get them all out and give you a quick look at it. So my favourite knife would have to be the chopper. Look at this. They're more of a, um, a tool than a knife. They're sort of industrial looking. Uh, they're super, they're a bit heavier. Really nice to use, Use well weighted. Uh, I will tell you a couple of things. You have to, um, because of the kind of steel it is, you need to season the steel or they'll go rusty. All right, now it gives you full instructions when you get them on how to do it. You pretty much just uh, use some coffee grinds and water and soak them in that and it forms what they call a patina on the knife and that actually protects it from rust. And my other hot tip is when you wash them, don't let Beck put them in the dishwasher because the steam, the hot steam's no good for a sharp edge. Uh, but also just wash them, dry them straight away. And if you need to put a bit of um, a fine coating of oil on, on a paper towel or something and put them back in the roll or their sheath. So you're going you go. to show which one my favorite is. I will show you Beck's yeah. favorite. I also want to show you when you, you don't have to buy the full set, you can buy these knives individually. So when they come, they'll come in their own box with their own sheath. So you can put these away, which not only protects the knife, but it also, it also protects um, everyone's fingers when you're digging around in the second drawer full of utensils, because they are that sharp if you're trying to find something. Um, hence, I've got one here somewhere. Where's that one? Anyway. Oh, anyway, I can't find it. I've got <laughs> scabs all over me, because these things, they're so sharp, mate. You've got to be careful. Um, Beck's favorite knife is this one. Oh, I love it. It's called a petty knife. So now, it's super, it's razor sharp. And it's great for just oh, everything, eh? Beck uses yeah, vegetables, yeah. cheese, steak, chicken, that's whatever we've got. Ch choppy up vegetables, no. It's just so, oh, it's a ripper. Anyway, let's have a look at all of them. There's the cleaver. There's the chef's knife. That's my second favorite. Oh, that's a ripper. And then you've got the one I showed you, um, the filleting knife. Now, the good thing why I reckon they're awesome for a present is because you can get them engraved like I showed you. I've got giddy up because it's been a bit of a catchphrase, you know? Uh, but I reckon if you've got your name on them or your business name or your brand you or something. You could do like Happy 40th or... Yeah, something like yeah. that. You could do, yeah, something cool. Cobber or nickname, something like that. I reckon that'd be cool. But that's how they come anyway. So I've always wanted to show you that um, because it's one of my favourite things that we have while we're travelling and caravanning and I reckon a lot of people are going to get a good use out of it. So that is the Fire Chef Knife Roll Bundle. Now it's from Osbry. You would have seen... I've been using some cool cooking gear over the last few months in like episodes, like the um, the round stainless fire drum where I put a, a spit on it and cooked on that. That's a compact bry. I use these other um, little rack setups called travel bries and that. Now they're all from the same fella, Clinton. He's given us a 10% discount code for you guys uh, to help us out and to help you guys out because um, we like giving you good gear at a discounted price, like give back. So we appreciate all your uh, support for following the channel so we like to give back where we can that is the end of this episode 1770 uh, we had a crack in time it's amazing oh, mate so amazing mm. but as always comments questions feedback down below if you've got some questions techie stuff that you want answered more hit us up i'll do a few more of these shed, shed sessions me too did, you, any, did you like Beck's <laughs> hot tips <laughs> <laughs> ah, she loves it i tell you what i should put i was going to put some bloopers in at the end of this this thing's turned off um, I was going to put some bloopers in at the end of this, but um, there's a few too many F-bombs from Becky, so I'll, uh, I'll Sorry, have to leave those out. we can't have the kids hearing that. No, we can't. Auntie Beck doesn't swear. <laughs> All right, see you later, guys. Um, love it. Great audience. Uh, you're legends. And we'll, um, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, God, it's nearly Christmas. Merry Christmas. Soon. See ya.
Hey, morning. Hey, I'm going to give you a, a head's eye view of, well, running into mangroves. Hang on. And, ah, ah. 